Hi, during previous sessions of pre uh, previous videos, we covered the topic of linear regression. During this short video clip, we are going to cover the topic of autocorrelation, which is very important in order to uh, get the most of our forecasting methods. So uh, let's go to my full desktop. So uh, here we are. This is uh, the lecture for week 16, modeling autocorrelation. So we are going to cover autoregressive models, two-layer models, and uh, evaluating predictability is going to be the next uh, um, topic for the next week. So um, yes, so what is autocorrelation? Is simply when um, a time series are affected by its previous uh, observations. Yes. So please allow me the metaphor. So uh, uh, sometimes when you have relationships, uh, you are uh, affected or, or your decisions that you are taking in your previous relationship is affected by a previous one. So if you have, for instance, a friendship, yes, uh, your uh, current friendships are, are going to, or are being affected what be, uh, um, because of the previous uh, uh, friendships. The same happens with uh, the actual time series, uh, GDP, inflation, uh, consumption, investment, everything, all the fundamentals in the economy might be affected by previous readings or previous, or previous observations of uh, their own uh, time series. Yes, and that is uh, autocorrelation. So we need to take the most of these relationships between previous observations. Yes, if they correlate, if they are autocorrelated, so that means that we can take advantage of that in order to forecast and, and have a beta and correct uh, models. So autocorrelation then measures how strong the values of a time series are related to their own past values. And that is what we are going to do. So technically, what we are going to do is to compute the correlation between series and the lagged series. So um, for instance, here on this slide, we have a then a, a that um, lag one autocorrelation equal uh, the correlation between Y1 and Y2 and uh, uh, this series. Yes, so as you can see, we are looking at the autocorrelation between Y1 and Y2, Y2 and Y3, Yt minus 1 and Yt. Yes, so that is what we are, that is lack one autocorrelation. But actually we could have autocorrelation as well um, on uh, longer lags. That happens when, uh, for instance, uh, previous observations are uh, still affecting or causing ripple effects in our economic variables or microeconomic variables. So uh, in those cases, so therefore we are going to find that even previous or, or previous previous observations are going uh, uh, to affect the current uh, uh, the current uh, observations. So that is why, why we need to have sometimes more lags here in the autocorrelation. So in general, the lag k autocorrelation is the correlation between y1 and yk plus 1 being k, the, uh, uh, the number of the lag, yes? So if this is a, a 3, this is going to be y4 and y1, y2 and y6, and so on and so far. As you can see, uh, we are able to find lag 1 autocorrelation, lag 2 autocorrelation, lag 3 autocorrelation, etc. Okay, um, so I think that is a, a, a pretty much the, the concept of um, autocorrelation. Um, and um, autocorrelation measures a linear relationship between these uh, uh, two observations um, and I think that is pretty much I have here like a, a quote saying I love you nothing and nobody not even time uh, will change that I think that is just to express that uh, um, that yes the autocorrelation sometimes is very, very strong. All right, so um, uses of, of autocorrelation. 
Uh, the first one is to check for the cast for uh, the, the for the casting errors for independence. That is very important. So uh, imagine that you forecasted anything using one of our previous uh, methods. Yes, and uh, with uh, the resulting errors that come from comparing your forecast and the actual values, you are going to be able to run a autocorrelation test. So if there is autocorrelation in the errors, that means that you still have information that could be valuable, valuable in your errors in order to carry on a, a predicting or to a refine your predictions. So that is model remaining information. And also other uses of uh, autocorrelation is to evaluate a uh, predictability. So here we have an autocorrelation of original series. This is a, a, an example using the retail sales. So we have here on this chart the retail sales and we have here the the forecasted uh, like uh, the, the forecast in blue we run this regression in our previous uh, lecture right and then you have here in black the validation period and obviously we are going to compare these two this regression uh, has a uh, certain errors yes and uh, that is what we are going to do but what we want to know is if this uh, time series has autocorrelation in R is very simple, it's just a, a, a using a, or like um, a command to find the autocorrelation function, which is this graph that we have in here. The autocorrelation function in R is or in any other statistical software, because obviously other static, statistical software has the same a, a procedure, is going to show us how strong are the lag a series in our uh, um, a time series. So for instance, here we have lag one, as you can see, is passing this threshold uh, by this dotted line, meaning that autocorrelation one is actually very uh, strong. So we can assert here that uh, the previous observation is very important for retail sales, right? So there is memory in the data. People is looking back to the previous month or the previous quarter, right? Um, we have as well uh, that the uh, uh, semester information here is uh, in very important. Well, it, is in, it looks important. And finally, the monthly information is also uh, very important to depict the uh, autocorrelation in retail sales. And I think that makes sense because um, I think we will think that, for instance, Christmas is going to have an affection uh, during certain months. And uh, also you can see how, for instance, in January, we have usually here on this graph, we have like a bottom in retail sales. That is very important because obviously we will be able to model a sector of the economy that has been uh, um, affected very much. Um, uh, during the current circumstances of this pandemic. Okay, so positive autocorrelation, uh, we have a positive autocorrelation in month 12, and uh, we have a stickiness lag one autocorrelation, meaning that prices are sticky. That means that uh, they tend not to uh, 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 um, uh, decrease. Yes, they are sticky, like in the, Keynes, the, the sense of uh, Keynes. So this information captures seasonality and improves forecasting. The last thing that I would like to mention is that these autocorrelations can be negative, meaning that very high values can uh, uh, like uh, produce very negative uh, observations in the future, right? So that will be a negative autocorrelation. In this case, in for retail sales, as you can see, we do not have really any, any negative autocorrelation. So after um, uh, taking into account these uh, uh, um, uh, uh, autocorrelations in the model, 
So we have here um, the examination of the residuals, which is other of the things that we can do with uh, our um, uh, autocorrelation uh, graph, yes, the autocorrelation function, the ACF, yes. This is another thing, as you can see, uh, the errors are actually not uh, transpassing these uh, blue dot, these limits in the, the, depicted by this blue dotted line, meaning that uh, the, the errors are not autocorrelated. That is very important because that let us know that the information in the errors are or is at uh, like a very like a very high extent probably very low, right? If autocorrelation were very high, that would mean that we still have information or valuable information in uh, the errors. So autocorrelation appears to be controlled by model five, which is trend, quadratic, and season, which is the, the model that we use in this uh, previous lecture, right? So uh, as you can see, uh, it's controlled because we can see that the errors are not autocorrelated, meaning that uh, we cannot see any information uh, coming from autocorrelation in the errors. So um, this is a question for you. So I will uh, make a pause here to let you uh, uh, come across with an answer. So yes, we have positive lag one autocorrelation stickiness is when high values usually immediately uh, follow high values and low values usually immediately follow low values. Yes. Negative lag one autocorrelation is the opposite. Yes. When immediately uh, um, high values usually immediately follow low values and low values usually immediately follow high values. So um, high positive autocorrelations at multiples of certain lag, for instance, lag 8, 4, 12, uh, indicates seasonality. So as you can see, uh, autocorrelation also captures uh, seasonality. So for instance, if in our previous graph we could see that actually autocorrelation was uh, capturing the seasonality at month 12, very much, yes, very low, very large autocorrelation. So that means that um, actually comparing January with January, uh, February with February and so on so far, that will be actually very uh, bene uh, like um, benefiting for uh, uh, our um, for our uh, forecast. So what to do? So if you have autocorrelation still in your errors, so you have two options. The option number one is a multi-layer model, yeah, a, a model uh, um, where the forecasted errors, uh, we model the forecasted errors by treating them as a new variable. Yes, and then we examine the autocorrelation of these errors, right? So we will be able to correct direct this autocorrelation by simply adding a new uh, 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 autoregressive variable, yes, one previous observation. If um, we can stop there and we cannot see more autocorrelation effects, then we can use uh, the results in order to improve our forecasts. If autocorrelated, we continue to uh, 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 modeling the level two errors. So in a nutshell, you perform a statistical uh, uh, like um, uh, estimation, any one of the ones that we have used, you will be able to find the errors because you have uh, the forecast and the actual values, right? and uh, obviously the fitted uh, results as well. So you will be able to get to know what are the errors. Uh, you test for autocorrelation. If you see high autocorrelation, 
then you will be able to sort out the problem by running a new regression with the errors yes with the lack component of the errors if that uh, uh, um, does not help the, uh, the errors in terms of carry on being uh, autocorrelated you can carry on continue uh, modeling the uh, subsequent errors uh, by lack uh, error variable I think this method uh, is uh, uh, probably a little bit long if you are using uh, uh, time series that are very autocorrelated, yes, at different uh, um, periodicities, yes, months or uh, uh, quarters or uh, seasonal patterns of a year or seasonal patterns of 10 years. So that would be uh, um, probably like a very um, uh, hard method. The option two is uh, model the dependence directly using AR, which is autoregressive, which is a lack variable, that, that would be, and ARIMA models, yes? So uh, we have that uh, ARIMA is autoregressive, meaning that uh, we have a, a previous lacks in our uh, um, explanatory variables, and we have MA, which is moving average, that means that we will make moving averages in our time series in order to try to smooth the series. And also we have a, this I is for integrated, so it's autoregressive integrated uh, moving averages, uh, meaning uh, that uh, the integration is going to be around uh, uh, certain periodicities as well. All right, uh, so... Um, that is why we have here a, this a, a picture, learn from the past, live in the present, believe in the future, meaning that uh, with a, this AR and a ARIMA models, we are actually a, a learning from the past, yes, by um, a, like a making moving averages, we are trying to smooth the series and using uh, um, integrated integration between these two, we are going to be able to sort, sort out the problem of autocorrelation. Okay, so we have um, autoregressive AR models for modeling for a cast errors here. So um, here we have certain steps. The first one is to use any method to generate a forecast. Yes, regression, smoothing. We have covered like, a, a, like several methods now. The second step will be to examine the forecast errors for autocorrelation. This means that you will need to uh, uh, like um, generate an ACF plot in R. Yes. And if you find that these bars are very high transpassing the blue dotted line, that will mean that autocorrelation exists and you will need to fit an AR model. An AR model is simply uh, like a sophisticated way to say that you are going to use LAX to forecast the error series. All right, so what are what is the main idea of the, the autoregressive models, AR? The idea is to model autocorrelation directly in the regression model. So I am going to uh, make a pause here and uh, my next video is going to cover the uh, remaining part of uh, this uh, lecture.